Today I am going to do a little chit chat with you guys about marrying into the Chinese countryside. What's up? Welcome to another video from Ling Ling. Today I am filming from Northwest China, a province called Qinghai. I am in the capital called Xining, but I'm actually located right now just outside of the main city in a small village called the New Bridge. <laughs> yeah, I know, creative. <laughs> anyway, so what am I doing here? Well, the last four days I've been visiting an internet friend who turned into a friend after we met here for the first time. We started chatting a few months ago when she commented on one of my videos and then after talking back and forth, I decided to come and visit her because her life here sounds so interesting. So I thought, why not go and have a look at what she's doing and get to know this girl. So my friend is from Sweden originally and she met her Chinese husband in Shanghai and afterwards they moved back to his hometown which is this little village and now she is living with her Chinese in-laws and, uh, and his husband's nephew and a sister that comes once in a while. During the time here in the village, I have been thinking a lot about, how to say, I've been thinking a lot about the idea of moving to the Chinese countryside. Because to be honest, sometimes <laughs> the many people in Beijing just makes me really tired. I'm also from the countryside originally in Denmark. Obviously, there are huge differences between the countryside in Denmark and the countryside in China but there are also a lot of similarities. So in today's video, I'm going to discuss with you guys my thoughts of like marrying into the Chinese countryside, living in a small village with a Chinese husband and in-laws and what I think about that. So without further ado, let's get started. This video is just gonna be a little chit chat between you and me, you know, just like two friends hanging out and talking about their experience and thoughts. So, as I said, I've been here for four days and during this time here I've been hanging out with my friend, obviously, and her husband, Chinese husband, and also the in-laws and the nephew and the sister was also visiting. We have been working a little bit in the fields and we have been helping cooking, so my friend is helping cooking every day. And I've also been trying to like cut vegetables and I've never really done these things before because even though I'm from the Danish countryside we would just have like a normal house we wouldn't have a farm so we like apart from strawberries and potatoes we didn't really have anything else in the garden so this is all new for me it's very interesting and as I said while I've been here I've really been thinking like could I do this if I, you know, suddenly bumped into Mr. Right and he said to me, well, girl, I'm going back to my village somewhere in China. <laughs> so you guys know that I'm staying in Beijing right now and I quite like Beijing because there are a lot of opportunities there, like work-wise. There are also a lot, of op a lot of options when it comes to food. So I don't know how much I've shared with you guys about this before but I'm quite picky about food and my stomach is really sensitive so if I eat too many new things my stomach is like whoa girl stop it you know <laughs> so after staying here for a few days I could feel my stomach was like a uh, little annoyed yeah um, because a lot of the food here is different from what I usually eat, obviously. I, to be honest, when I'm on my own, even in Beijing, I do eat a lot of Western food. Well, probably mostly just like Danish kind of tasty food, I guess. I also brought some stuff from home. So I don't mind eating Chinese food. It's not a problem for me, but my stomach is just like, <laughs> not always so excited about it. Here they eat a lot of noodles. So I learned that flour is kind of not good for my, I don't really know if I'm like gluten intolerant. I don't think so. I don't think you can say that, but I think that I'm getting close to it, you know, so my stomach gets really affected if I eat too much bread, um, bread, noodles, rice, all these kind of like really heavy things. So I kind of just like totally cut that out of my diet at all, totally. <laughs> But coming here, you know, I don't want to be rude or anything, so I would eat with them, obviously. And I eat the auntie, um, 
the uh, mother-in-law, she would of course tell me to eat more because that's Chinese tradition. People do that all the time, eat more, eat more, eat more. So I would eat more because I was also hungry. But I also knew for sure that I would have a problem, stomach problem afterwards, which of course happened. Like two days later, I was just like, oh my God, I hurt so bad in my stomach. So that's one thing. If I met Mr. Wright and he said, let's go to the countryside and stay with my in-laws, I would probably hesitate a little bit. And if I had to go, I would have to talk to the in-laws about my stomach issues and I would have to tell them that I cannot eat these things but I would also don't want to make that much trouble you know so I would feel really rude because we had to discuss these kind of things you know and I don't want them to change anything just because of me but I would say if they totally just accepted that I couldn't eat any like flour things, that I didn't eat any noodles and stuff and I could just eat the vegetables and the meat, that would be totally fine. Then I would, I could easily stay here, that would be no problem. So I guess like if they're open-minded people, that would be cool. So that's one thing, the food, okay. The second thing, I really like the countryside in China because it's slow, you know, lifestyle here is really slow and chilled you just like hang out and do your thing and yeah there's just no rush people just chill so in a way it's quite nice because you don't have to it's not hectic you don't have to run around and also this village is kind of still close to the big city so you can definitely go there if you need to work or if you need to do anything important or if you just need some kind of like you know big city vibe but because it's a countryside, it's the village, it's also really quiet. And if you don't know me yet, then I'll just tell you that quiet places is not really me for a longer time. I don't mind having some time on my own, I need to chill sometimes and just be with myself and my thoughts. But if I'm on my own for too long, I just like freak out. I just can't take it. I just need the noise, you know, because my head is really noisy already. So noise around me kind of kind of makes my head less noisy, I guess. I don't know if that makes sense. But like more noise around me, I can't really hear my like noisy thoughts all the time. <laughs> I know I need to work on that one. But yeah, so I would say coming here on a vacation for like one or two weeks or maybe even a month, that would be fine because they have like super fast Wi-Fi here. I actually think the Wi-Fi here is faster than <laughs> my dorm so that's pretty cool I would say with the Wi-Fi that's like a big plus definitely with the Wi-Fi I can do my work online so I don't really need to go to the big city all the time that could that would that could work you know if I worked from home but then again another thing is the people here so because we are in Northwest China these Chinese people they speak another language some people call it like a dialect I would say it's another language because it totally sounds different. There is no similarities whatsoever. I'm totally lost. Like even when I say ni hao for hello, they're just like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't know if it's because they're surprised to see a foreigner or if they actually don't understand what I'm saying. I'm not sure. But that kind of, so there's a language barrier, right? So my friend, she's trying to, she's trying to learn some Qinghai uh, dialect. But that's another thing, like if I met someone who stayed in a village like these places, I would have to learn that as well. And also, let's be honest here guys, village people, most of them have never gone to school, like the older ones and the younger ones, they went to school maybe like seven years, I think they have to go to school here in China. So apart from that, they don't really go to school, they haven't... Like, it's just, a, it's a big difference when you have done your university degree as well. Like, there is a gap there, okay? Um, there might be open-minded people, people who will try to talk to you, but very often it's just like talking about food and it's just, it's not interesting enough for me. So again, if I had to stay in a village, I think, well, obviously when you have a husband, you have him to talk to. So my friend here, his hus her husband is like, going out and coming back with work so sometimes he's not here but mostly he's coming back in the evenings so that's pretty cool I think if I had a husband who came back as well that would be fine but again I know for sure that I would feel lonely because I would need somebody to talk more to but then again I also have a lot of friends online and I have you guys you know like I have all of you guys to talk to so it might not be the biggest issue Wow, okay, I'm really like talking in circles right now. I hope that you guys can kind of follow what I'm saying here. So another thing that is pretty cool about the village is that there are not that many people and it's cheaper. Okay, it's cheaper guys. 
My friend here, she's staying here for free. She doesn't have to pay anything for like food or anything. So if she makes any money, she can save up. And her and her husband, they are going to, or they want to start a company later on. So that's pretty cool, you know, like big city life is super expensive. You shop too much, you go to the coffee shops too much and rent is like insane. So that's a cool thing about the village and the countryside, it's much cheaper to stay here, there's more freedom, also if you have children, children can just like play around and go to school with the other village children and also for children in general in China it's like life is really hard for the children in the city when it comes to studying, like they just study all the time and have so many classes all the time. Obviously, they might earn more money afterwards, but then I see the children here, they're just so happy, you know, they're playing around with their friends and with their family and everything is just a little slower. I feel like they have more of like a childhood here and I also grew up in a place where we would be outside like literally all the time. So I would love to give my children that kind of um, that kind of option as well, you know, just to, to chill and have fun and be happy during your childhood instead of just doing math classes all weekend and when you didn't have math classes you would do English classes and whatnot. Yeah, so life in China is definitely different. The, as I said, the village life here is different from the Danish village life because we still have houses and we have electricity we have we have like bathrooms so they do have electricity here but they only have hot water if the sun is shining and the bathroom yeah i don't know if we need to talk about the bathroom it's literally just a hole in the ground muddy hole in the ground and you can see everything everyone else did that day so yeah just let, let's just leave it at that i'm i think that i'm pretty open-minded but i've got to say that the whole toilet situation is a little uh, Again, if I had to, I could stay here for a while, but I guess I would like to save up and make a real bathroom <laughs> a toilet thing that's actually working. <laughs> Anyways guys, these were some of my thoughts of like marrying into the Chinese countryside. I cannot say yes, I could do it or no, I could never ever do it. I would say as my friend here, you know, she's close to the city still, so if they got a car, they could easily drive in there, drive to the city like 20 minutes. I have another friend who's doing this as well in South China, and I think they work it pretty well. Like, they have, that's another thing again, they have a big house here, you know. In the big cities in Beijing, you would have to stay in a small apartment, and the in-laws might come over, and there would just be a lot of people in a very small amount of space. So that's a cool thing about this place. I have like my guest room here is like huge and they're like huge room uh, rooms outside as well and they do have heating as well which is really nice. So I feel like it really depends on who I'm meeting and you know how you make your life work in the countryside. If I could drive to the big city in 15 to 20 minutes and like work in the city, have my own office in the city and then live in the countryside, that would be great. I think that would be a really cool way to do it. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see who I meet in the future. Those were some of my thoughts. I hope that it was not too confusing. As I said, this is just a little chit chat. So thank you for watching, guys. Just wanna remind you to check out my Patreon page if you wanna support Lena around and Lingling. Ling. Ah! <laughs> And also, I signed up as a local tour guide in Beijing on this website called showaround.com. So you can check that out as well if you want to meet me, if you want a really cool tour of Beijing or you want to eat something specific, I'll take you there. So check that out, showaround.com and just search for Lena, my real name, Lena, L-E-N-A. I should come up from in Beijing. You can also see a link below. That would probably be easier. <laughs> also follow me on social media, Facebook and Instagram. I do a lot of Insta stories these days. I really like it. So yeah. Anyways, have a nice day, evening, wherever you are in the world. And I'll see you again very, very soon. Ling ling sa, see ya and zai jian. Bye bye. <laughs>